Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Fab Fit Friday. <laughs> um, I'm sorry I'm a couple minutes late. My husband is, um, he had to run out the door to actually shoot a wedding somewhere that's far away in like either Massachusetts or New Hampshire and I had to help him get him ready. So I'm a little behind. Hi Kathy, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, all right, so we are at week four of the short sew along. And what I'm gonna do today is show you guys how to um, sew the button vents. And I also have some troubleshooting things um, that I wanna talk about when it comes to your front fly zipper because I had some troubleshooting to do on my own front fly zipper. So I wanna share that with you as well. So I'm gonna do that first. Um, hi Mary, hi Jane, hi Janie, welcome ladies. Sorry I'm a couple minutes late. All right, so let me show you, I wanna show you something here. Um, ugh, I probably shouldn't have re-sewed it. Hi, hi Diane, hi Sally, welcome. Ooh. Diane's finally got the shorts on the cutting table. I'm really happy to hear that, Diane. Um, go over to the community tab because you can see the 9,000 piece puzzle that Diane's daughter put together. Um, it's a sea, like a sort of a, a saltwater sea um, picture. It's beautiful. I put it on the community tab so if anybody's interested in seeing that, they can check that out but I thought it was very, very cool. I showed my dad and he was super impressed because um, he's a super puzzle nerd and he really enjoyed it. So thank you for sharing that, Diane. All right, here's what I wanna do. I am going to switch my view here and I just wanna show you something that I didn't show with the zipper last week. And you can see here, I have my front fly of these are my um, cotton sateen shorts. And what I wanna show you here, this is just little things that make a big difference. Um, first of all, uh, let me turn it inside out. I hope I can still show this um, before I, I think I can still show it. Okay, so after you sew the, um, just make sure that's, close enough here. All right, after you sew, you know, the zipper to the right and left side, you finish the crotch curve. And here's my crotch curve. And I sewed that up and I actually basted my shorts together. And then I noticed from the right side, there was almost no overlap um, at the base of my zipper. It, it covered you know, the, the folded edge of the fly did cover the zipper, but there was no overlap. So if you have that problem with your zipper, like if you sew your zipper together, try it on and then notice that there's no overlap, what you wanna do is you wanna go back in and look and make sure when you sewed the, um, the crotch curve that you actually made sure that both edges were even. And what I noticed about mine is the side that the zipper overlaps onto was backed off, meaning it's almost like I offset the seam. So there was, you know, it didn't create that overlap. So I just want to point out that it's really important to make sure that your seam allowances on your front crotch curve are even all the way up. Okay. And sometimes it's hard to see that when you're sewing and you can't see the seam allowance underneath. So I just wanna point that out. Let me stop and say hi to Judy and Diane. Hi ladies, welcome. Um, all right, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is, another thing that can help the fly look nice when it's on your body is when you sew your um, front crotch, when you top stitch it, if you, stitch up past the base of the fly stitching about a half an inch 
that helps to hold that shut as well. Okay, so if you have, you know, if it's gapping or doing something funny there, stitching up a little bit past the base of the fly helps. Um, and also making sure the base of your fly and your top stitching is um, going through the base of the zipper. Okay, that's the other thing. So those are some things I had to kind of redo um, when I was working on these shorts because I was trying to hurry up and finish them so I could show you how to do the vent. So that's just a little recap on, you know, front fly. See, now when I open this, um, so why is that not opening? Um, you can see inside I have plenty of overlap okay for the zipper to stay on the inside of my shorts all right so I had to redo that and then this these shorts are like a comedy of errors I wanted to show you one of the vents finished the button vents that I'm going to show you today and I have it right here okay and of course because I I didn't cut out the the vent pieces in one piece with the shorts and I will tell you that it makes constructing the shorts a little I mean I'm sorry it makes constructing the vent a little bit funkier when you have separate vent pieces and what I'm talking about is I actually had to cut out separate vent pieces because when I cut these shorts out I used my pattern that didn't have the vent that was built in and the built-in vent looks like this Okay, these are just little samples. Okay, so this is um, the back vent, and this is the front vent. I'm sorry, this is the back vent, and this is the front vent. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to put it together, um, doing it with it attached, and I'm going to show you why it was a little bit more awkward. So before we get into that, let me just show you. Um, I use these little like little 3 8 inch buttons. I think they're cute. Um, and then I used a double round um, buttonhole. Let me show you those. Okay, so see how... I'm going to have to trim some of that away. Um, but see how it's like a double round button hole? Okay, so those are the buttonholes I used. And to finish the folded over... Um, the front vent folds to the underside and then you do the buttonholes and um, that's how that works and of course I finished the bottom hem edge like you would a button placket on a shirt so I'm going to show you that as well but then I'm just going to go ahead and show you the comedy of errors on this these shorts for some reason my side seams matched but now look at how they don't match. This was my hem allowance right here. Okay, and then look at. So I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to fix that um, to get that to work. So, um, oh, Mary sent a very cute thank you emoji. So you're welcome. I don't know if that was for showing you all my boo boos or not, but you're welcome. And Karen says hi. Hello. Okay, so. Okay, so that's how the vent's going to look. I'm going to show you, like I said, I'm going to show you on some sample fabric. But basically, I have some tips for um, sizing your buttonhole and then also checking your buttonhole. Um, when you get your buttons, they usually come on some sort of button card like this. You can see these are actually vintage buttons because they cost $1.25. Um, but basically, one of the cool things about leaving the button or at least one of the buttons on the actual card is after you sew your button, a sample buttonhole, you can try it while it's on the card to see if the buttonhole is the right length. Oops. So basically I used one of the buttons on the card to make sure it would go through properly. Um, okay, so that's a little tip for sizing your buttons when we get to that, but I just thought I'd share that with you right now. Oops. Okay. All right. So I'm going to deal with all of these issues, but 
the one other thing I want to show you is on the inside, the reason why it becomes awkward if you have sewn on vents is because um, you have this extra bulk here and you can't just sew down like this if this were all one piece I would sew my seam down to here like where the dot is on the pattern and I will show you that so basically um, having a separate piece made it a little bit awkward because what you do is you sew down to where the seam stops where I sewed the vent on and so that's how I did it and I mean it works and it looks nice but it's just a little bit more fussy um, so what I'm going to do is let's get I'm going to move that out of the way and I will finish those later but let me just get the actual pieces with the vents um, attached and I'm going to cut them out well I will in a minute um, basically on your pattern you have um, on the smallest size I put a little dashed line down to a dot and in the back okay so this is the back I'm just gonna label it so we know and this is my front so in the back it is two and a half inches from the dot to the end and that's because we're gonna turn this outer edge under okay so that's um, why this one's a little bit wider. This one is two inches because we don't have to um, turn the edge under. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut these out quickly. And I'm sorry they're not cut out already. I just realized after fussing with my sample I already have started that it was so much of a mess. I just wanna show you how to do it um, the way the pattern comes. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these out. And then I'm just going to quickly cut them out of some khaki fabric so I can show you how to do this. Okay. Okay, so here are my pieces. The one thing I do want to check before I start working with it, and I recommend doing it, checking it on yours, is make sure... Um, that the vents are equal in length from the bottom, from the top of it to the hem. Okay, so that's the first thing. You wanna do that. And you can see how the back is a little bit wider than the front. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this fabric and I'm just gonna quickly cut out two pieces here so I can show you how to do this. And then the other thing I'm gonna also show you is how to clean finish that vent on the um, serger because it's a little bit of an awkward angle. So let me just quickly cut these out. Okay. Oh, also, I want to let everybody know today at four o'clock. I've decided to have an impromptu Zoom fitting. So if anybody is still working on their pattern and they want to get together with me at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, um, you are welcome to join me. Just email me and I'll send you the Zoom link. And that way if anybody's still working on their shorts fitting, um, I can help you with that. Since my husband's going away for the evening, I thought, it's the perfect time to spend some extra time with you guys. So anybody who's interested in anybody who's interested in joining for a little fitting later, please email me and I'll send you the link. All right. Okay, so here are my fabric pieces. Okay, so of course, if you were working on your shorts, um, you would have full fronts and backs here, but I figured this will be easier just to have these two pieces here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw on here the lines that I would probably chalk on. Oh, hi, Debbie. Welcome. I hope you're well. 
Okay, or doing well, I mean. All right, so basically, I just want to draw some guidelines here so you can kind of see how this is going to go together. This is my seam allowance, right? And you're gonna, we're going to sew these right down to this dot, okay? And that's what makes it easier to work with when you have, um, you know, when you have the built-in fly piece. We're going to sew to there. And then I'm just going to measure down two inches to make a dot here. And then I can connect this. Uh, oh, you know what? It's going to have to actually be... All right, so I was going to draw my line like this. That's actually not correct. I believe we need the fold to continue right along with this. So now I'm noticing that's a boo-boo too. Okay, so this is when after this is sewn, it's going to fold back like that. Okay, to the side here. All right, so so actually that measures two and a half inches. Okay, so just keep in mind, just ignore, I guess I'm gonna have to fix that for my next printing. The fold line for the vent continues the seam line. So this is the seam line and this is the fold line right there, okay? And the same thing on the back, if I draw my half inch Seam allowance. Now, you don't need to draw these seam allowances on your fabric. I just want to show you what's happening. So this is a half an inch away. So we're going to continue it right to there. And then this is going to come straight down. So this will actually be three inches away now. Okay, so this is my fold. And this is my seam. Okay, so that's how that's going to go together. And then also, we're going to be pressing this this edge under the ha that half an inch because that stays open. This lays flat. Oh, so actually there is no fold on this side. I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't fold back the back one. All right, let's look at the let's look at this again here. So just so you can get a visual. Okay, the back piece. Um, lays flat, the front one is folded under. Okay, so this is actually where the um, folded edge, when it's closed, will line up like this. All right, so that's how it goes together. So please let me know if you have any questions about um, the process of doing this vent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my serger over here and I just want to show you how to clean finish oops, this these awkward angles. Okay, that's the first thing I want to show you. So for now, I'm just going to take my sewing machine and I'm going to put it on the floor. Okay, and then I'm just going to get my serger over here. Okay, and I just want to show you quickly how to finish the edges. Okay. All right. Okay, so when you're working on an angle, let's make sure, is that a good, let me just, I'm going to move myself over here. Okay. All right, so when you're working on an angle like this, let's see. First, I'm going to surge up the side of the vent. Then I'm going to do this angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a total straight line. So see how we're coming to this angle? I'm actually going to 
um, let me just put a little clip here. This is a half an inch seam allowance. I'm just gonna clip it a little bit to give me a little bit of wiggle room. So basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pinch this so it creates a straight line. Okay, and see how I have this pleat here? I'm just gonna fold that to the back, and then I'm gonna just continue surging up. See what you end up with is a nice finished inside um, corner. Okay, so let me just do that one more time. We'll go this way this time. And again, just to give myself a little bit of a, to make it a little bit easier to make it into a straight line, I'm just literally going to pinch this right up. Okay, and as I get right there, I'm just going to straighten that out. Oops. Oops, I fell off a little bit. Hold on. Honestly. Okay, let me just finish this side here. Okay, so now we have two finished vents. All right, let me just shut this back off. I just wanted to show you how to do that because it could get a little awkward. Let's get this back up here now. So now the next step is, let me just plug this in, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, so here's what our two vents look like now. Okay, and this is not going to have a fold. Okay, so here are our clean edges. I'm just going to clip these. All right. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about what's going on with these vents at the moment? If you do, please let me know. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do here is this is the back vent and I'm just going to turn this under a half an inch. And I mean, typically I would press this with my iron, but just, um, you know, just to get this process going, I am going to, um, just fold it under a half an inch and stitch it. But you do want to give it a nice press on your actual shorts. Okay, so let me just take my zipper foot off here. Okay. All right, let me just stick this on. Okay. So I am just going to stitch this So that is the first step in prepping. Oh, um, Amin Bryant, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, says, great video, really need these tips. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so I've top stitched that flat. Now the next step is, let's deal with the front because the front um, what we need to do here is we need to press um, Just trying to think of the best way to do it. I almost think what we should do first is sew the side seam I know that's going to make it awkward and make it bigger, but I think it'll make it easier in the end so I'm going to line up my um, My side seam edges here 
And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew to that dot. So basically this dot right here. So let's, let's sew the side seam first because then we won't have to worry about um, getting that done. So I'm going to sew my side seam to my dot. Then the next step is let's bring the iron in here. Okay. And what we want to do with the iron is we want to press the back part of the vent. I'm sorry, the front. Okay, so this is our front right here. What we're going to do is we're going to fold this to the back. Okay, so we've got, let me just show you here. So here's our side seam is sewn, right? And we've got these floppy pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore the back for now, and I'm literally just going to press my, um, well, first let's press our seam allowances and I'm going to press the seam allowances toward the back. Let's do that first. So press your side seams towards the back and then what we can do is we can continue pressing the front vent under. Okay, so now what we have here is, let me just open it up so you can see. Okay, so we've got our side seam, and we've got our, this is the back, and the front's going to lay right on top of it like this, okay? The reason why we need to do that is because now, if we look at it from the wrong side, you can see everything here is going to lay nice and flat. We're not going to have to worry about the seam allowances being funky, okay? So we sewed our side seam, then we folded the edge of the vent in the front to the back like that. The next thing we want to do is now that we have a nice crease here, I'm going to refold the vent to the front because what we want to do is we want to finish that edge like a button placket. So now that I have my crease for where it's going to fold, I'm just going to put one pin in here. And let me just put the um, iron, Let's slide the iron back out of the way and bring the machine back. All right, so I am going to sew the bottom edge of this front vent three quarters of an inch because that is the allowance that I have for my hem. So basically, I'm just going to sew this three quarters of an inch like this all right and then what I'm gonna do here's what the vent looks like I am going to cut it but I'm gonna leave the finished edge there I'm gonna cut it about I don't know, three eighths of an inch away from the end on the inside, and I'm going to cut it really close to my stitching, probably an eighth of an inch like this. So it looks like this. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this to the right side, and you can see what happens now is I'm just going to use my scissors to poke in there. You can get a nice finish. So now our vent on the right side is finished. Okay, I'm sorry I drew all these lines on here, um, but basically you can see how nice that is. Okay, now the next step is what we want to do is we want to make our um, buttonholes. The buttonholes go on the front leg. 
So let's remember, this is the front, this is the back, okay? So we're going to do our buttonholes, and you can put as many buttonholes as you want. I'm a fan of three buttonholes. I like an odd number. So basically, what I want to do here is, just from the inside, I know that what I'm going to do after is I am going to sew um, an angled seam and I'm sort of going to I'm going to basically follow the you know the top edge just to secure that so I'm going to sew myself a little seam there and then if you want to you can also sew here you know depending on how much top stitching you want to do on some of my shorts, I just sewed the top to hold the whole vent shut on the inside. Um, but if you want to also sew this, this side part shut, you can. That's up to you. But you want to have that sort of in your mind when you place your buttonholes because um, I think that the button, the buttons, like from this lower corner, I'm going to put... Oh, and the other thing is I want to put them about a half an inch from the folded edge here. So I'm just going to make, um, from this edge here to here will be my first one, kind of going across like that. And then this whole thing measures five inches. So I think I'll space them an inch, if I do an inch and a half and an inch and a half, that would be, I think, a good amount of spacing. So there... In there okay so that's where I'm gonna put my three buttonholes and they're gonna come across like this okay so that's where the buttonholes go and if you have a buttonhole foot like this you can actually put your button into the back of your foot and size your buttonhole for you I was using these little tiny buttons on my shorts. I'll, I'll make a slightly bigger buttonhole on here. And then of course, remember, you always want to do a test buttonhole. Okay, so always get some extra fabric and try it. So in the spirit of that, I'm just going to cut a scrap of this fabric. And we'll try it. So let's pretend um, let's pretend I put a button in there, okay, and it and it's that big, okay, so we're just going to pretend that's a size button, maybe a half an inch button, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my sewing machine back, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this on, and I personally am a fan of the double round buttonholes for this technique or sometimes the keyhole looks good too but basically you know you want to get your chart out and pick which button you're going to do so I'm going to do the double round okay so to now this is going to work for any machine that you have um that has this automatic buttonhole foot. You put the button on and then you bring the little lever down because it will help, that's what will size the button. Um, Mary is saying that she doesn't snug the button up and she gives it a click or two to make the button not so tight on the button. Yes, that's a very good thing to mention, Mary, and that's why it's also important to try a button hole before you sew it on your garment and then try putting it on using a button that's sewn to the button card so you can see how easy it goes in there because then if it's too tight you can loosen it up a couple notches and I'll show you what I what Mary means in a minute all right so I am gonna just stick this here and basically now I'm gonna draw myself a guide I have on my real vent you know dots with lines like this so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my fabric under there so that my needle is going to be right at that dot. And I also want to make sure that my fabric is, you know, it's going to be perpendicular to that, the folded edge of the button bed. So I'm going to stitch this. Okay. 
All right, so then after you sew your button, you would treat it with fray check if you were doing, um, you know, if you were doing a, you know, on your real garment, but because this is a sample, I'm not gonna take the time to fray check it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a hole on one end, then I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna start from the opposite end and then as I get to where the hole is, I'm going to poke my seam ripper through that hole, and that way there's no chance that I will cut through the, um, you know, the, the opposite side of the buttonhole there. And then you're going to want to try it to make sure it fits. And obviously, let me just see, hold on one second. I've literally been using one of my mom's button boxes. This is one of my mom's button boxes. So like, you know, she has all these fun buttons and different things. Let me try. Let me just try this one here. So this is another button I'm going to consider using in the near future. It's like a, looks like a little flower. So what I would do here is I would try my button you know, I'll try buttoning it on the card. And obviously this buttonhole is, oh, actually, all right, well actually this one slides right through. This is an awkward one because it doesn't have a round curved shape, but you can see it does go through. But now let's say we wanted to make the button a little bit bigger. Here's what Mary was talking about. When she puts her button into the buttonhole foot, after she clamps it down, she backs it up just a click or two. You hear that click? Okay, so now it's loose in there, but it'll still make a good size button. Um, Anna and Rachel says, now I want to make sure it's instead of altering, reconstructing this wedding dress. Oh my goodness, that is an ambitious project. Working on a wedding dress, good luck with that. You can make sure it's after. <laughs> All right, so see how this is loose? This is what Mary was talking about. If you jam the foot tightly onto the button, it may not be big enough. Okay, so thank you, Mary. So just loosen that up a little bit, you know so it's not snug down too too terribly tight all right and then try it again so then once you get the size of your button on your sample now it's time to put it on the vent okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring my vent back over here and basically i am just going to do them in a row okay so Remember, I've got my double folded, you know, my vent's already folded into position. I am putting my needle so that it's going to be right at that dot at the beginning, you know, the dot at the beginning of the line there. And you can use, visually, you can use your plate, um, you know, make sure that it's creating a right angle here. You want it to be you want your buttonhole to be perpendicular to this folded edge. Okay, so now I'm just gonna stitch the first one. one. So now I'm just going to bring it right down to this next one. I'm going to stitch that buttonhole. But you can see that this buttonhole looks pretty good.
So at this point, I think um, the one thing you can think about is you sewed your side seam, but you did not sew your inseam. So you should be able to still keep everything laying flat, and then you can sew your inseams after you finish your button vents on the side seams. You really have to resist the urge to push and pull at the fabric. You really have to let the machine do it. All right, so now I've got my buttonhole sewn. That's exciting. Let's look at that. Okay, so the next step is like I said, if this were real shorts, I would fray check the buttonholes and I would let them um, dry. So either fray block or fray check, and you can treat the middles of the buttonholes, you know, and I would do both sides. I would do the underside and the top side and just let those dry. That'll help prevent the buttonholes from um, fraying. And then once they're dry, I'm just gonna open them and I'm going to do it the way I showed you, where I make holes in the opposite end. And then I'm going to come in from this side. Okay, so there's one. Two. See how the, the tip of the seam ripper just comes right out? All right, so happy day. Our, our um, button vent is almost finished. The last step is to position the actual buttons. And the way I like to do that is I like to take a pencil and stab it through probably a third of the way from the end closest to the fold not quite the center, but the third, because I want it to stay shut if I'm, you know, keeping it there. So basically, I'm just going to make a little dot with my pencil, okay? And I can just do all of them like that. Okay, so you can see those look pretty even. Then we're going to use, I'm not going to take the time to sew all the buttons on, but I do want to show you how to sew one button on and I'll sew this little pretty floral button on like this. So if you have um, you know, a two button buttonhole, it, it'll look nicer if you make sure the holes on the button are all orientated the same way. So I'm gonna make them horizontal like that and I'm gonna center it on that mark I made so the way I center it is I look to see it in one of the holes and then I snudge it over a little bit. And then I'm going to use one of my fancy favorite um, sewing tools called Scotch Tape. And I'm literally going to tape this on. Okay, so now I don't have to worry about it sliding around. And I want to show you, some of you may have a specialty foot that will help you sew a button on using your sewing machine. And it looks like this. So I'm going to show you how to do this now. Okay, let me see. I'm going to take off my button hole foot. Put up my sensor. Okay, now these feet have two um, shanks on them, or two attachments. The back one gets swings on to like a hook in the back and then the front one snaps on okay so it's really attached by those two things so that's how you put it on and then the cool thing is it has this little rubber foot there that holds your button for you you have to pick the stitch that looks like um, sewing on a button so you can see it right there on my machine it's number 32 Okay, so I'm going to pick number 32, 
And then you have to put your feed dogs down because we don't want it to go anywhere. Now, if you don't have this special sew on a button um, stitch on your machine, you can use your zigzag, but still put your feed dogs down, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my button and I'm going to stick it like this. And the first thing you wanna do is hand walk. Cause see how my needle is not going into the hole? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it a little bit closer. And I'm gonna move it over a little bit. So now it's in that hole, I'm gonna swing it. See how it's not wide enough? So my button hole is set at 3.5. Let me see if I can just move this over here to show you. So see how that says 3.5? I'm gonna make it 4.5, okay? My width of my stitch. And let me just try that. Just see if that will work. See, now it goes through the hole. <coughs> Once you're sure it goes through, you can let <coughs> you can let it rip and press on the, the gas. And then usually this stitch will come with a tie-off, so it locks off for you. All right, so let's look at this. Okay. Okay, so this is my lovely sewn on button. One of the benefits of using your sewing machine to sew the buttons on is it makes a nice neat um, bar tack on the inside too. So you don't have to worry about you know, not having a nice neat bar tack. So basically now, you know, this would, let me just button this one. Okay, so there's one of my buttons, you know, so obviously I would do the other two. So that's how you sew the, um, that's how you make the button vent. So I hope, if, I hope if anybody has questions about doing a button vent, they will ask me. You know, if you guys need help, please let me know and I will help you. The other thing is, um, we're gonna have one more week um, we're going to have one more week of the sew along. Next Friday, we are doing, um, I'm going to show you how to put the rest of the shorts together with the waistband and the button at the top of the waistband. The one other thing I want to show you today is how to sew a dart. So if anybody needed help um, or if anybody's new to sewing darts, I just want to show you the way I sew a dart. So let me get that. Um, All right, so I'm, I'm making a pair of short, like shorter version of these shorts here. So I'm gonna show you on that, those shorts. Let me just show you here. This is my down and dirty way to, show, to sew a dart. You can see this is my back, right? I have two of them. Now I know for me, I need a half inch dart and I need it to be about three inches. Okay, that's what my figure likes for a dart. And I also know I'm gonna put a back pocket on my shorts. So I'm not super concerned with um, how the tip of the dart looks, but just in case you were, I wanna show you, this is my down and dirty way to do it. Notice I did not mark any darts. What I like to do here is, I like to take my back leg, fold it in half, so that the side and center back seams are basically parallel to each other, like this. And then I know this is where my dart's gonna go. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my, um, let me just get my presser foot here, my regular presser foot. Okay, so I folded it I'm going to go back to my straight stitch, okay? And I'm gonna use the side of my presser foot as a guide. I'm gonna put it in like this. And if my presser foot, the side of my presser foot on my machine is very close to a half an inch, okay? So that's how I'm gonna start. And then I'm going to, 
quickly just, you know, I want my dart to be about three inches. So I'm basically going to just put a wonder clip right there. Okay. And I am just going to sew without drawing anything. I'm just going to start sewing my dart. And I'm just going to go all the way down to the base. And when my feet, the front of my presser foot hits the wonder clip, I come off the edge. Okay, once I'm off the edge, I take a few stitches and see how I have that little tail there? To secure it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back onto my fabric and I'm going to bar tack right inside the dart intake. So I'm just going to go front back. Boom. So see how I have a little secured, um, I have a little chain right there there and it's secured and that will keep my dart nice and neat. And when I open it up, there's my dart. Okay. And like I said, if I get a little bubble there, I mean, I'm sure that's going to press flat, but if you happen to get a little bubble there, no worries because I'm going to be putting a back pocket on the top of it. Okay. But that's how I like to do my darts. And by folding it in half, the dart is centered on the back leg, which is the perfect place to put it especially if you're going to be covering it with a back pocket because then the dart is going to be centered on the back pocket. Okay, so that's how you sew a dart. Um, so for next week, what we're going to do, what we're going to do next week is we're going to, um, I'm going to have the inseam sewn. I'm going to show you how to finish pressing up the hem, sew the hem. Then I'm going to show you how to attach the waistband. So I'm going to cut out a waistband and a waistband facing. And I'm going to sew those together around the top edge so I have that ready to go. And then I'll show you how to attach it to the shorts. And then finally how to put a buttonhole on. And then your shorts will be finished. I'm like super excited. Now just to give you guys a insider peek at what's coming up next. I'm super excited. The Confident Stitch is a store... Um, in Missoula, Montana, and they contacted me and asked me to do a review of their swatch service. So I'm super excited about this. So on Sunday, you can tune in to watch the review of their swatch service, and I picked out a fabric from both swatch cards. So the two swatch cards, I can show you what they look like. Um, I'm going to open them up on Sunday, but um, this is what the swatch cards look like from, from um, the Confident Stitch. Isn't that pretty? So I've already picked out my fabrics and I've, I've received them. And what I'm going to do is reveal which fabrics I chose. And um, one of the fabrics is going to be a beach tote sew along. So I'm super excited about this. There'll be a free pattern for the beach tote sew along, and I will do that. Um, I'm not. I'm. I may do the sew along on Sunday, or I may do it. Well, yeah, I'm going to do it on Sunday because next Friday is the last. Um, the last um, part five of the shorts. So. Starting that next Sunday, I will be doing the beach tote sew along, and I'm pretty sure I can probably do that in one, um, you know, in one shot. So I will be live on Sunday at, let's say, 11 o'clock. So 11 o'clock Sunday next week will be, not this Sunday coming up. This Sunday is going to be the, the re the review of the swatch card service, revealing all of the fabrics plus my choices. And then next Sunday, we'll be doing the Beach Tote Sew Along. So I hope you'll join me for that. Um, let me see here. I have some things I didn't say. Kathy said, Scotch Tape is a winner. Great job, Jen. Debbie says, I so appreciate your sewing insights. And Sally says, I love the Confident Stitch. I hope to visit them in person when I go to Montana in the fall. And I'm looking... I was looking at their Big Sur canvas fabric for pants 
they sent me some really nice swatches. Yes, they are lovely. And I'll just tell you, the reason why I know them is because Kate, who is the owner of the store, actually came to my house when her daughter was graduating from a local college here in Connecticut. And we worked on her jean pattern together many, many years ago before she opened the store. And it was really fun because she was telling me how she was going to retire and she was going to open this store and then watching her do it and watching it be such a wonderful success and such a creative um, place. I, I'd love to go visit it in person as well. Um, you know, it almost makes me want to live there because when I look at her blog posts and see, usually when they're shooting um, pictures of things they've sewn, they're standing outside the store and you can see down the main street and it's just such a charming little town from the picture, so I am very excited to um, get there at some point. Oh, Michelle says, hi, my dog is doing better. She's starting to walk again, so I will be able to start on my jeans. Oh, Michelle, that's such good news. Um, I'm so happy your dog is doing better. And if you want to join me at 4 o'clock today, email me. I'll send you a Zoom link. Anybody who wants to work on their shorts or if you want to work on your stretch jeans, whatever, um, I will be doing a Zoom fitting at 4 o'clock. So I welcome anybody who wants to do that to join me. Just email me and I'll send you the Zoom link. And my husband's away, so I'm not in a hurry to finish. So if you want to come but you can't come till 5, still get the Zoom links. I'm sure I'll still be working on it past 5 o'clock. Okay, so, um, you know, please join me if you can. And if you can't, it's not a good day, Michelle. Let me know, and we'll get together, okay? All right, well, this is super exciting. Um, I'm wearing a pair of shorts that I made last year. Let me just show you. These are my last year um, shorts, sort of like just a loose pair. Um, so I'll be excited to add to that. This is the one I made, the pockets. Um, where the one piece pocket bag where I sew the front of the pocket is here and I basically sewed through to get the shape of the pocket but you now I like these my zipper has a little problem there but that's a separate issue but anyway so I'm excited to make more shorts um, let's see oh Michelle says how do they oh how do they fit after your fab weight loss well, they are funky and loose in places, but because they're shorts, um, I can get away with wearing them. I think mostly on my pants pattern, like all the way down my leg was way too long. These are loose in my legs, but I don't care because they're shorts. They're a little baggy, but I'm fine with that. Oh, Mary says cute button. Yes, that's also from Carol's box. My mom has boxes and boxes of things and so I love going through and finding different things to use in her box so um, yeah so anyway so that's my report for today um, I will be back here at four o'clock doing a live zoom fitting so anyone wants to join please um, email me at jsterndesigns37 at gmail I'll put it in here um, jsterndesigns 37 at gmail okay so email me there if you'd like to get the zoom invite all right so that's my report I hope you guys um, you know I really I feel bad because last week I forgot to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day during that during Fab Fit Friday so I guess I want to say I hope you guys had a wonderful Mother's Day last week and I did. It was very nice to get together with people finally. My whole family got together at my sister's. It was nice. So anyway, that's my report for today. Um, join me Sunday for the um, Confident Stitch Swatch Service review and kickoff of a Beach Tote Sew Along. Um, and yeah, so that's my report. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you maybe at 4 o'clock or maybe next week. All right. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye. Oh, oh, Debbie, happy, um, happy Mother's Day to your mother, too.
Okay. All right. I am signing off. And I will see you guys soon.